Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 495, Three Biologic Processes of Aging, How Do We Age, Concerning the Brain, the Sensory Systems, and the Muscle Systems. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. The last several weeks, we have been talking about 10 separate body systems. And we've been doing research on each of these systems in terms of how they contribute to or experience the process of aging. Mm -hmm. Every day we're alive, we get older. The older we get, the more our original systems are at risk of breaking down. Mm -hmm. And so what we've been looking into is how do each of these systems break down? And is there any intervention that we can make that can reduce that process or slow it down. I mean, ultimately, we're all going to get to the point where we die, but, but we want quality of life as well as length of life to be an equal focus. And so we've been talking about these systems, and today we're going to talk about the brain. And I, I had heard younger, when I was in school as a kid, that your brain is kind of, because the heaviest part of you is your brain, mm-hmm. seven pounds, mm-hmm. I think, when, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, it just atrophies over time, but it doesn't replace anything. It doesn't right. rebuild and, anything. And that's what I was taught in medical school. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. And that And so that's 40-something, five years ago. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 40, like, back in the dark ages. Back in the best. dark yeah. ages, back in the 70s, I was taught that as well. And it's not true because the brain is always building and breaking down. Yeah. So the part that aging, how aging affects the brain is that your brain breaks down more than it builds up, more than it replaces the cells. So when you get to a certain point, not when you're 30, not when you're 20, but when you're 40 to 50 and even and older, your brain starts deteriorating and not replacing the cells if you don't put your sex hormones back. Believe it or not, your brain and your and your <laughs> your ovaries and testicles are att- are actually con- connected, and giving giving you back those hormones from your from your sex glands gives you back your brain, and your brain starts building as much as it breaks down. So it stays at a steady state. It doesn't start deteriorating. You don't start losing memory. You don't start going. Uh, where was I going? You know that kind of memory or not being able to remember somebody's name. You don't get old brain-wise if you replace those hormones. So short-term memory, the inability to, to remember a name or a fact you know, that mm-hmm. you know that you know, mm-hmm. and you're trying to find it and it just won't come to mm-hmm. you. And then after the stress of the moment is off, you, for me, it's sometimes yeah. that night when I, you know, if you say something really sharp to me mm-hmm. and I think of the perfect comeback, but I'm reduced to, oh, yeah, huh. And, and <laughs> no, later, that was me. That's what I'm always morning, reduced to, I'll oh, yeah, huh. And the perfect answer will be there. So. If I replace my testosterone, mm-hmm. I'm more likely to get that faster right. or more you're immediately. Fast, yeah, you're faster yeah. in your response. Okay. But also, I'm almost almost daily when I'm in the office, I have at least one patient, one female patient, yeah. who comes in and goes, I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. I think I'm getting dementia. And they're 45 or they're 55 and or they're 60. And that they're, they're clearly but, not. But it doesn't help their, if their their husband and their kids are teasing them about, sure, mom, come on, what's the date? Right, you know, right. Like, are you an old lady or yeah, what? You know, yeah. and, and that does not help. Yeah, and they call them names so, like Bubblehead or you know, Dimwit. Or, right, and they, you know, do, and they do that. So lovingly, by the, by the, some Maybe. <laughs> by the time that somebody <laughs> gets to my office, they're in a terror thinking that yeah. their brain is gone, and then that's the end of their life. So... I have to then pull them off the edge of the cliff and say, most women who lose their testosterone and have a low level like you do, you know, the person in front of me, because I already know what their level is, have this issue. They don't get enough blood flow to the part of the brain 
called the labeling part of the brain, where you label things. You have names, <laughs> places, things, or and, descriptions. And if they haven't mentioned it in their symptom discussion in the first visit, mm-hmm. you've got their, and then you point that out as a common experience. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, yeah, I was going to mention that. <laughs> right, because <laughs> sometimes they don't want to tell me that. Because yeah. then I might think that they're crazy or they're, yeah. or, or they really have lost it. They're so afraid of it, they may not even speak it. So, so I asked them about that, and, they, and they're, they're like, is that like normal? I said, no, it's not normal, but it is common when you lose your hormones, especially testosterone. The difference between normal and common. Right. I mean, that's an That's a big difference. Yeah. Normal is healthy, good uh, activity, good production. You, you can go recall, to work. Short-term you can access. think. Yeah. You can you can conduct your life normally right. and happily. That's that's healthy and that's normal, but that's not what most people. Most people are just saying they're average. For a, yeah. in other words, you're along with the pack. Everybody who's getting older loses their brain. Well, that's not healthy and that's not normal. Right. But it's average for for a certain age group. So we're going to talk about three systems today. One is the brain, which we're still mm-hmm. talking about. I want to come back to a couple of things about the brain, but we're also going to talk about the the sensory system. Uh, and like your hearing and your vision start to decline. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was 42 years old, my wife and I were driving somewhere. It was nighttime. And we're looking for the street we're supposed to turn on. Mm-hmm. I'm two blocks away from it. She sees the street and reads the street sign. I can't see the street sign. First time I was consciously aware that my vision was That your night vision was bad. So I got glasses. Right. Oh, um, your vision was bad, I, not just your night vision. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I went to the doctor that week and came home with glasses. And, and so that's a very tangible moment in my mental remembering because that's the first step of being old that I identified. Now mm-hmm. my hearing is bad and mm-hmm. I have hearing aids. I'm not wearing them right now, mm-hmm. but I, I just lose more and more. Mm-hmm. And I'm reading these studies that if you don't correct your vision, you don't correct your hearing with mechanical devices mm-hmm. that, that help them, then that actually interferes with your mental process as well. You start to lose words. You mm-hmm. start to not recognize words when people use them. Cause you're, and, and you learn to fake it. I mean, I'm really good at, at faking it. If I can watch your mouth talk, right. I can hear you Smart better. Smart people can fake it. <laughs> but I, I constantly, I'm, my son and my wife now laugh at me because I'm answering questions that nobody asks. I mean, somebody said something and I thought it was a question. I give them an answer and, and they're like, why did you just say that? I mean, they, they tease each other, tease me. They'll look at each other and say, skillet. Because at one point they were having a conversation. Is that like squirrel? It is very much like squirrel. And I looked up and said, oh, skillet, you know, because I thought they were looking for where the skillet was. That wasn't what they were talking about at all. And then they both laughed. And so now it's a way they cut me down to size when I get too big. Yeah. Well, uh, but, but, coming but that back, is kind of a, an, it's kind of something that happens to many of us. Right. And some of us never had good sight. So some of us were wearing contacts and glasses since we were 16. So I think you were lucky that you didn't get it until oh, you were Oh, I think so like too. I'm not 40s. complaining. I'm no, just recognizing I'm just saying, reality. But, but it is common that your sight changes. Usually first the night sight goes away. And then, yeah. and then, then your far vision, then your near vision. So again, the difference between common and normal. Right. So it's common for that to happen. Yeah. But normal indicates something that's optimal. That's that's good. Okay. Or or healthy. Yeah. And so that's what I'm going for. I'm going for normal, healthy, optimal uh, functioning. Functioning, so yeah. that you can see and hear and and uh, taste and feel. All your senses are normal. So there's there's a quotation from the book that we've been using for mm-hmm. this research. It says an Italian study in the year 2000 demonstrated that there's a cognitive impairment without dementia, which increases with age and is more prevalent among women than men. Right. And so these women who come in mm-hmm. may be aware of that. Mm-hmm. At any rate, what they are expressing is a concern. I feel like I'm slipping. I, my family feels like I'm slipping. Well, they're terrified that they're Does really that, slipping. Am I, coming, am I gonna be in a home with Alzheimer's? Am right. I gonna lose my identity? And your response is, uh, if it's not dementia, if it's not Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. if it's because of hormone loss, we can fix it within six months. Right. We'll two, know. two treatments. And we'll know and because we'll know. Yes. you'll you'll start recalling things. You'll start getting your getting your brain back and getting faster and quicker with right. your responses. And everybody will notice and you'll notice. Okay. So I think the reason, just an aside, is that when women hit menopause or even before, they stop making testosterone. I mean, it is so low you can't even, you can barely test it. Okay. 
men always make testosterone, but it drops and becomes lower. So they don't get that as early and they don't get it as severely. So that's your explanation. That's my explanation. And there's a lot women. of other studies that show that. Right. But women have the opportunity to counteract that by taking estrogen, which gives them a 10-year extension. If they take it in the first 10 years after menopause mm -hmm. that, and keep taking it, then they have a 10-year extension that they won't get Alzheimer's or dementia. They get If they were going to get it at 70, they'll now get it at 80 if they start taking their testosterone, excuse me, their estrogen within 10 years of their menopause. If they start taking testosterone as well, they get a second 10 years. So Basically, they can get to 90 without losing their brain if they start these hormones. And, it, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing because I talked to somebody from the Alzheimer's Association and they said, well, we don't even talk about that. We don't even look at hormones. That's not something that's in our, that, that we fund research for. I'm like, well, there's a lot of research on it. You're just not reading it. Because they're all studying brain processes and structure. They're studying the microscope, and, yeah. the microcosm of the brain, mm -hmm. instead of looking at all the, the things that, that actually, the big things, the macrocosm that actually affects their brain. Yeah. So that's one of those things that's sad, but I didn't convince them. <laughs> I sent them research. I didn't convince them. So. No. Well, they're, they're focused. I mean, it's, it's like people saying, you know, I don't believe in vaccinations because they don't look around seeing anybody with polio anymore. Right. But and that's because we're all vaccinated. <laughs> Not all of us are. And I mean, many of us are. And the growing. And so that many of that it'll come back. So it will. We'll, we'll see it exactly. again. Exactly. But, so. but that's that myopic vision that specialists get. Right. I mean, and even though I'm a specialist, I'm not really a specialist because I look at all the systems right. So of a that are affected by aging. Well, let's look at another system. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at muscle mass, strength, stamina, mm -hmm. and aging. So your argument for years has been if you lose testosterone, you can't make muscle. But if you replace your testosterone, then you have the ability to make muscle. You still have to go out and make it. You, mm -hmm. have, to, you have to exercise, you have to lift weights, you have to do everything in addition to aerobic And exercise. you have to eat enough protein, which is usually animal protein, to make muscle. And I'm hearing all the vegans screaming, yeah. we can eat pea protein to make it, but it's going to take a lot for you to make muscle out of pea protein. That's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot harder. Yeah. So... Okay, so, so I, I admit that, but you have to know a lot about your diet, and you have to you have to kind of live the diet right. before you live anything else. So, so for the rest of the world who are carnivores, right. eating meat protein is the way to build muscle. That's the building blocks for muscle. So you have to eat that. You have to exercise. You have and you have to get your testosterone back when it's gone. And once again, for women, this is more severe. We lose it all, and we just look. We get all fat, and we get mushy and dimpled and and it's it's really uh, it's ugly to lose your testosterone so and well, all of our muscles dissolve and, and, and we men, make but fat men out as of well it. when they don't have testosterone or if they have testosterone they have that it. converts to estrogen yeah, right then they get soft and pudgy and, and pudgy. cuddly and they're not yeah, strong right that's and true it's just that women it happens sooner so we're not it happens talking about more bodybuilders. severe we're not talking about people going, guys going like oh look at my muscles because we're they're talking about the ability, <laughs> skeletal, muscular system. Right, in normal people. That allows you to stand up and walk, to have your balance. I was reading an article about aging people needing to work on walking and balance. Like, can you walk across the room with a cup of coffee? Can you walk across the room and well, that, have a Well, and that's the minimum. Yeah. Because absolutely. I don't want to be reduced to yeah. just walking across the room to get a cup of coffee. No, with a I cup mean, of coffee. Can you walk can, and yeah, balance? with a cup of coffee. Yeah. I want. I want to be able to... Run, play up, tennis, run upstairs, play, golf, play tennis, walk, play golf, yeah, do, exactly. you know, walk the golf course, do, you know, do the things that I've always done, maybe not skiing, but you know, a, you, a lot of people still I, ski. I, so I try to, I mean, I, you don't, ski. I don't have a nice character. I'm not a nice person. <laughs> really? I try to avoid going to the yeah. grocery store on the, the morning that the old folks home delivers everybody to yeah, the grocery it's just store really hard to, because they don't have sensory awareness. They drift. They literally are not aware of anybody around them. Mm -hmm. They're focused on Well, they can't hear, they meal. can't see. They can't hear, they can't see. And many of them have to hold onto the basket to stay erect. And right. so they move so slowly and they shuffle their feet. And I understand that and mm -hmm. I respect that for them and I'm glad they're mm -hmm. getting out to do it. I just don't want to be involved in it. I don't want to be limited it's by It's frustrating it. for us. Now, just it, think how frustrating it would be if that were you. Oh, my God. I mean, if you're the person with that. I would not be livable with 
I would yeah, be such it, a bad. Yeah, we would be very irritable and angry and unhappy. Yeah. And, and and that's that's the outcome of that. So you get a bunch of angry old people. Yeah. It's it's not pretty. And we're trying to get people to to change their lives before this happens. So in the materials that we read, mm -hmm. they, were, they were talking about replacing testosterone for muscle mass, but also mm -hmm. growth hormone, yes. which we can't replace. Right. But what we do can't we do replace if we can't it. replace growth hormone? We can't so, because the government won't let us. It can be. They, they, yeah, we can replace it. Certain doctors are, are approved to give it, but there's so very few that it's not about, and it's not for aging. It's for children and, and growth problems and certain people with traumatic, big traumatic brain injuries like from right. a war, right? that kind of thing. So uh, what we what testosterone does in most of us is testosterone stimulates the production of growth hormone. Okay. So I watch the IGF, which is the IGF one is what we test for to watch growth hormone go up. We watch that test go up and see that that our, the outcome of our testosterone is making the growth hormone go up. However, some people get testosterone and it never goes up, and other people it goes up and then they get to a certain stage. And the testosterone's not making, not pushing their growth hormone anymore, so they start losing muscle mass, and they start maybe not being able to think as well, even because their growth hormone's going down. Growth hormone is the one hormone that they've actually studied and shown to actually drop as we become more debilitated and go up as we become as we're less debilitated, as we're less aged. Yeah. So if somebody has comes to see me and they never have growth hormone and we never get muscle mass in terms of like a year, we then give peptides. Peptides are something the government's trying to take away from us at this very moment. But peptides are just little pieces of protein that you inject, but they're specific, they're communicators. And they actually go to your thalamus or hypothalamus and to your pituitary and stimulate your growth hormone. And so so they're, they're targeted messengers, right? And they go to these sites, and essentially the messages turn on. Right. And so that site starts to produce mm -hmm. what it had already by the age. It always process, did stop producing. Well, it stopped producing because <coughs> that, but it always did it before. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing when we've got people on testosterone, and it was stimulated, and then testosterone isn't enough. We have to add something else. Right. And that, may, but you have to see it to believe it. I mean, people who are like exhausted at workouts and. And can't can't think as clearly as they used to. You give them you give them these peptides, and they're back in action. Their growth hormones normal, and they act like much younger people than they are. So, the fundamental building blocks are the replacement of the hormones. Right, that's the but first. But there thing. are other factors that contribute that you need to become aware of, and you may need to make some decisions about it when you can think more clearly. You know, reducing the stress level. Of your life, if you can, if you look at your life and the way you're living your life, can you reduce your stress? Uh, reducing the toxicity if you in your environment. If too you, much alcohol, too much smog, smoking. smoking. Yes. Too much smoking marijuana, too much smoking cigarettes, too much nicotine in terms of chewing. I have a friend who has COPD, <laughs> which is he's is, never been a smoker, but it, he has COPD. Is damaged to to your lungs so that all your alveoli break down and become one big alveoli, which means they don't. They don't absorb oxygen very well. He's allergic to cats, but his wife and daughter are cat people. And so he has to use drugs and shots to reduce the impact so that he can still breathe. I don't get it, but that's the choice they're making. And I keep telling them that's really dangerous, but they love their cats. Cats are family too. I kind of get it, but I mean, I wouldn't. Well, you're put an a, animal person. I wouldn't. So you I wouldn't put a cat conflict. to sleep. But when the cat goes, yeah, yeah. I don't, don't think. I think it. I would find a dog that didn't shed, or something. You know, something I, that took the place a pet. I mean, people live longer with pets. Yeah, by the I, way. and mentally, I mean, they, they take them to hospitals and nursing homes. And dogs. Yeah, and they make I people feel better. A, but if you're allergic to that and you have bad lungs, that that's that's not a great decision. No. However, it's up to him, and it's, it's, a it's quality his life, life. Length of life question. Yeah, and and so he's going to have to live with the outcome. Yeah, and he is. But some of the um, let's see the uh, muscle strength. Let me let me talk about muscles for a second. Okay. Your muscles aren't just important for getting you around. Your muscles actually put pull on your bones, which then stimulate your bones to get thicker. If your muscles are just gone, saggy, not used, you sit in a chair all day, you don't work out, you don't do exercise then your bones are going to get thinner faster. And our bones get thinner without testosterone, without 
estrogen for women, uh, without vitamin D, so without they calcium, brittle? they become brittle. So and that's why old people, when they fall, it breaks something. Yeah. And they usually fall because they don't have enough muscle because they can't balance. balance. Exactly. Then they fall and they've got brittle bones because the muscles aren't there to put, to put counter traction on the bone. The bone needs that to stay healthy. So that's another thing about bones, uh, bones and muscles. But muscles themselves actually make us warm. They are what tes thyroid goes to to make them burn calories. So they burn calories. They give us our heat. They actually... Get, they actually make our blood sugar normal. So if you don't have a lot of muscle, you're you're more apt to have prediabetes. You're more apt to gain weight. You're more apt not to be able to maintain your body composition and the look of somebody who's younger. So muscle is hugely important in the metabolic process of the body. So if you think it's not important, hey, I don't need to be a bodybuilder. Well, maybe not a bodybuilder, but you do need to exercise and you do need to make muscle. Therefore, you do need testosterone because it ain't going to happen unless you have that. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other things about muscle is some people come in, I don't do that exercise. I don't do this exercise. Okay, I get that. Some of us are built with fast twitch muscles, which means like me, I have 100% fast twitch muscles, which means I should never do long distance running. I don't have the stamina for it. I'm a sprinter. I basically can sprint. I can lift weights. I can, you know, I can do uh, body work with yoga, but, but lo long distance running, long distance anything, any kind of stamina work is not going to work for my type of muscle. Okay. And so if you're, if you're like my friend Beth and she has all slow twitch muscles, she runs marathons. Huh. That's her thing. How do you know what you are? Well, 23andMe tells you. Oh, okay. So if you get a 23andMe genetic test, you'll know. Okay. You can just go look and see if you're fast or slow, and then they explain it. That's one of the good things about 23andMe. Okay. So, uh, and, some, and most people have a mixture of both, and so they can do a little bit of both, little which of is each. great. Right. But um, that makes you more flexible. Can you emphasize one with training or develop it more if you, if you have the capacity? If you, if you have both types of muscle, yes. If you have one type of muscle, ain't going to happen. I see these guys that used to be NFL football players who were all bulked up mm -hmm. and massive, weighed 300 plus pounds, mm -hmm. who've retired and done it appropriately mm -hmm. in, in terms of their physical uh, working out. Mm -hmm. And now they've reshaped their bodies and they're slender and they've lost weight and they, they have good muscle structure, but they're not big, bulky, huge steroid guys anymore. I think that's two things. I think that's that they're older now. So you aren't making as much testosterone. Okay. They, I don't know if they used other medications right. to make their, them bulk up, but they're also not eating 10,000 calories a day, and they're, not, and they're not working out with weights two or three hours a day. I mean, they did it. They were, so, so their lifestyle was different. plus diet and nutrition. Right. Exercise plus diet and nutrition and testosterone. Because you can do that. I mean, I, I hear this every day. I exercise. I've been eating uh creatine i've been on i've do, been doing proteins um and i have all these these supplements and i can't make muscle well your testosterone is in the is in the dumpster so once we give you testosterone and you continue to do those things you can make muscle so it is it's everything i usually liken it to um if you want to grow tomatoes you can't just water the tomato and keep it in the dark and have no dirt around it you need three things you know so to make muscle you need the exercise. You need a diet with high meat protein or an extensive amount of pea protein. <laughs> and you need, the, you need the vitamins, all the nutrients. Right. You know, and so for, and you also need the testosterone. So you need the exercise, the diet, and the testosterone. So sunlight, water, and dirt grow tomatoes. And that's kind of how we're growing our muscle, muscle mass. So we're running out of time. So I want to talk about the, the sensory system just a little mm -hmm. bit. The, one of the biggest concerns I have about people aging is mm -hmm. that as they age, their taste process for different nutrients mm -hmm. changes, mm -hmm. and they lose the sense of taste. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've talked to any number of older people who are sort of withering away mm -hmm. because they don't eat anything, or, or they mostly eat sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will drink Ensure or products like that to try to get all their nutrients mm -hmm. in, but they're not getting them the way they've always gotten them, which mm -hmm. is, is by eating. So this aging process 
can be delayed. It can be slowed down, the, the loss of taste and nutrient right. absorption. That's part of your brain. Yes. Taste, all of your senses, except and even touch, they're all part of your brain. And if your brain's healthy and it's still being growing and replacing itself, then you should maintain your most of your senses. Now, hearing is a different thing because it has to do with the little bones that are in your ear. And if they've become arthritic or they, they become stuck to one another, you can't hear as well. Or uh, that is genetic. That nerve isn't. It, I mean, my my husband's dad had genetic nerve uh, disintegration. Well, also, little hair follicles in your ear canal that mm -hmm. vibrate with mm -hmm. sound waves. Mm -hmm. That gel that surrounds them starts to solidify, mm -hmm. and so they don't vibrate as much, and you lose on the top end and low end of the mm -hmm. register. So you don't hear you your wife. hear those sounds. You don't hear uh, what? <laughs> you don't hear women's voices. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, that, yeah, that, yeah, it's true. Exactly. So you're not it's hearing. True. Them. So, so, but so, your eyes can be maintained by taking testosterone, uh -huh. and and. For, for women, estrogen, because when I had my ovaries out, I went to the eye doctor just routinely because I go every year, and he goes, holy, whatever, you've got, you've got cholesterol on your blood vessels through your eye. He said, is your cholesterol high? I said, well, it's always been high, but I've never had that before. Mm -hmm. And he said, he goes, man, and it's starting to look like you're getting kind of some degeneration. And, and I went, you know, I, I I started taking some vitamins, but this isn't the wasn't the trigger that actually fixed me. Six months later, I was on testosterone and estrogen, and have been for since then. So that's 18 years ago. And every year I go, and they're like, "Your eyes are perfect. Your macula is fine. You have no cholesterol in your vessels. You're you know you don't have cataracts. You don't have. I mean, so so it reversed. It reversed it. Right. So that was miraculous because my dad had macular degeneration and both parents had cataracts and glaucoma. So you're so a prime suspect. At this stage, they were already sick. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm 65. So at 65, they were already sick. So that concludes our discussion of the 10 systems of the body. We've gone through those over the last three weeks. We hope that you find this informative and, and interesting, stimulating for your thought processes. But hopefully you and your doctor can begin to have conversations about what you're learning to see if the, your doctor is willing or able to help you fight this decline and increase the quality of your life for the length of your life. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.